give them the call, like uh, what information we receive, to make sure we get a CIT officer to go handle that call. Does that make sense? Right. Yeah. So, so you guys, and how are those training done? Like, when they do it, they all the new recruits now that go through the academy? Yeah, that, that, yeah, that's a requirement. So that's why eventually all the officers will be CIT certified. Um, as they, as they start coming through the academy, and then we have a recertification class that we take every two years. Um, now, I know it's the, what is it, the North Coast Davis has a uh, separate department. Yeah. And is it statewide or is it going to be... What's that, the CIT? Yeah. Um, I, I, don't, gonna be like, I don't know how other agencies uh, use the program. Uh, I would imagine they would use it too because it's a useful tool to help officers in, in certain prices. I don't know if we had any We don't train. I don't think we're training to other agencies. Uh, they might have their own training. That I'm aware of. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not aware of it. No, no, the CIT, the CIT training is that the basis time of the Demetrius. Uh, the Demetrius was one that initiated the program, and they set the standards. Now, is there like set of standards, and you guys write your own standards now, and what's expected to be done, like in the training program? Yeah, there, yeah, there's certain. We follow those certain standards. You know, we're not out to make our right. own. Okay, because they're going to be what? Yeah. 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 yeah, it's department-wide. We all get the same training. Um, right. And it's just like wherever they got the training from, this is what we follow. Okay. Now, when you guys go out and say deal with the homeless issue, you know, is that considered to be a person because you're going to allow the homeless to be have... Not necessarily, because there, there's a lot of homeless out there that don't have any mental disorders uh, that are still mentally stable, but we do run into a lot of homeless that are not mentally stable. Uh, and one reason they're not is because they can't get their medications, because when they're homeless, so it's hard to go, go get your medications and then to stay on top and take them. So that's why we run into a little more instances with the homeless, because they're just they're not able to get meds. To stay on. We right. actually have a homeless liaison who helps out with um, people who have problems when they come to shelter and things like that. Um, that's a totally separate entity because the mental health issues are different. CIT is more for people who are in crisis at the moment. Can, can I ask a question real quick? Yes, sir. Is it an actual policy for you guys to stop and ticket or arrest homeless anytime you can, or is that just kind of a, uh, a de facto thing? No, we don't go out to try to arrest homeless just because they're homeless. The only time we arrest homeless is if they're breaking the law. And that's the same with any person. Okay? If they're breaking the law, then we're going to draw attention. A lot of times we warn people at first, then we cite them, and then if they keep doing the same thing, then we arrest people. So, a lot of times, like I do a lot with the homeless over here, the homeless corridor, and I know a lot of them by first name, I, I talk to them every day, and you know, a lot of it has to do with safety issues, um, and people are out on the street, uh, and other cars are driving in the roads, and they're going to try to split some money. We're not there to try to keep them from trying to make you know, some type of money to help them figure it out. It's more of, you have some mom driving to school to drop her kids off, she doesn't, she doesn't see something in the road, and she runs over someone, that's tragic for them. She want to get the person to run over, and for the person driving. So we want to keep stuff like that from happening. And you know, there's other like different health issues and stuff, as far as, you know, uh, I, uh, some of those that use dark drugs and stuff, and they have stuff like that. So that's why they get arrested. They don't get arrested because they're homeless. Okay. Now, when you say you cite them, that's you write a citation. Now, is that usually called the fine or, or how does that? Yeah. yeah. So, for example, like you know, someone is uh, in the roadway. It's against
it's a law to be in the roadway, uh, like right, walking down Bonanza here. So a lot of times we'll write him a citation, we'll see a judge and say, hey, you know, we observed this and they were standing in the roadway and it's against the law. They go see a judge, they can either pay a fine or do or whatever it may be. Or, or we can, yeah, it can exactly, it can be a warning. It's just a, okay, a warning that we can say, look, we talk to you about this already. Okay. Now, these individuals are going to be homeless. They're homeless with the So, either getting to an area or getting to court or magnifying might be almost impossible for them to do. So, kind of push them into a system where they you know, really have no way of working themselves out of. No. Um, a lot of the homeless that don't help and that. Uh, have why to take care of you know, they're responsible for what their for actions. They have no problem doing that. The, some of the people that don't want to, um, don't want any help, you'd be surprised how many people don't want help. Um, we're really out there to help them. Nine out of ten times, I really try to get someone off the streets into the shelter, um, into housing, rather than running a citation or taking the jail. Because, like you said, it, it is kind of, if, if that's all we do, then that's all they'll be. It's just a uh, revolving door. They just keep doing the same thing, they're not getting any help. And I work with our community oriented policing squad, and our whole purpose is to try to help the homeless get off the streets, get sheltered. We have work programs. There's all kinds of um, opportunities out there for them. But a lot of them tell me, you know what, I just want to sleep on the streets. I don't want shelter. I don't want anything. I, I feel uncomfortable. Some people get comfortable where they're at, and we don't want to, we don't want to help. And we can't force people. You know, I can't help those that don't want to help. But the few that want help, we get them housing, we get them work programs, we get them off the streets. You know, we have a lot of success, success stories where people were homeless a couple of years, now they actually have jobs, they have apartments. So it's out there. It's just a matter of kind of educating some of them. You know, what's out there. You know, unfortunately, you know, people's pride get, get in the way. I mean, let's face it, you know, you go through a hard time. It's kind of embarrassing to say, hey, I lost everything. You know? um, uh, this is, are you working this way? Yeah, I work downtown. Downtown area. Um, are you familiar with the downtown initiative? And what is that uh, Meredith? Yeah, what is Meredith? Uh, is the name of that project? Well, she works with the Rangers. Yeah, the downtown Rangers. Yeah. And they have homes. You got a question in the hand? Yep. So anytime, like, they're, they're really good uh, resource for us because uh, they have a, a, a homeless liaison on themselves. Right, Meredith. Meredith, yes. And I work with Meredith. I don't know. And a lot of times when we come across the homeless, and I'll refer them to her so she can help them too. Um, we're constantly, we're constantly trying to get these people to get them off the street because it doesn't do anyone any good themselves or anyone if they're just out on the street. I'm sorry, guys. I know I'm. Uh, I know there's other questions. It's like we got time. If you got more stuff. Oh no. Oh, I want to take a break here and rest. So, uh, so what do you guys do? <laughs> What's your interest in? Uh, like, so uh, you got some like solutions or with the homeless or? Well, in, in relation to the homeless, uh, a lot of the harassment they get from the police and from basically everybody, a lot of times when, when homeless are arrested or cited, then that builds a record, which I've heard, I've heard people say that, you know, there's a policy that, they, that they're supposed to build a record with homeless people so if they do something serious, then they can put them away for real time. No. Um, but what happens is now they have a record and now it's that much harder for them to get off, get off being homeless because now they can't get a job. Um, yeah, there's a little trigger for you. I, I, I kind of understand where it comes from. Um, but a lot of their crimes are misdemeanor crimes. Um, trespassing, open container, uh, jaywalking, stuff like that. Those by no means are going to keep anyone from getting a good job. 
Well, if you fill out a job application, it says what have you been arrested for in the past, I think, two years. But most of this stuff so is if you have they're this looking for gross misdemeanors or felonies on those job applications. A misdemeanor is a speeding ticket. I mean, have you ever got a speeding ticket? So, you, mm -hmm. so if someone is not going to hire me because I got a speeding ticket, I guarantee they have a speeding ticket. Well, too. So if you have this laundry list of uh, uh, jaywalking within a residential neighborhood and that sort of thing, which I know for a fact happens with homeless people. No, it, it does, but at the same time, the law is the law. Okay, just because it's it selectively who we are, if you keep jaywalking. So the law is not supposed to be selectively enforced. The, uh -huh. the law isn't supposed to be selectively enforced. That's right. That's why everyone so, gets treated the same. Nine out of ten people who are jaywalking in a residential neighborhood aren't going to be stopped. The tenth person is likely to be homeless. And the excuse that they're being stopped for is the, that they're jaywalking. The reality is that they're being stopped because they're homeless. What are we going to do with the homeless person by, by arresting them? Well, that's the question. And, and I just explained it to you. We, have, we even carry a community a contact card that has shelters on there, that has feeding times, that has shelters. A lot of these homeless people don't want to go to shelters. Right. Um, and they're, but if they're not, if they're not actually harming anyone, no, I do. It's not a perfect world, right? right? right. Okay, no. you can get, you can, you, you can go with me right now. We can go down the main floor, master. We can stop ten people. Maybe one person that actually take your your um, your help, whatever it may be, because there's always some kind of bias that they had because they had. Maybe they did have a bad encounter at one of the shelters. Um, they're not perfect, but we got to start somewhere. So, if that person is not actually harming anyone, should we really be making punitive actions against them? What do you mean? I mean, if nine out of ten people that you stop don't want help, if they're not actually harming anyone, if they're simply jaywalking in a residential neighborhood, should we really be citing or arresting them for that? Neighborhood. They're jaywalking on these three, four lanes right here. Mm -hmm. Because they're panhandling right here and they're cutting across traffic, mm -hmm. causing accidents. But there are, there, if they're actually causing a problem, I mean, that's what, that's a whole different issue than if they're walking in a residential neighborhood and that's against the law, so we're going to stop them for that because they're homeless, then that's a completely different issue. Well, it's not against the law to walk through a neighborhood. Well, there are people that have been, so, have been stopped it's inside. It's some type of personal experience yes. that you know. I work with homeless quite a bit, and I see homeless people get harassed on a regular basis. Okay, where at? Everywhere. I, at the parks. Okay, that's 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 usually city. It's a city I see, I see them. City ordinances. I see you know them within the residential neighborhoods getting stopped for jaywalking. Okay, so a lot of those people get in trouble because they're uh, in I, an area that are only for children. Or they're drinking at a bar. Which is which is really created in order to give people an opportunity to get harass the homeless. Right. What is the what is the statute on, on the uh put the children in the park? Uh an adult you can't be within you can't if you don't have a child, you can't be within that area. Within and the child area. What's and these are public parks, correct? Right? Which are paid for by anybody who pays taxes. And they are kind of punitive then. And when you make these rules about having children. Well, children first of all, we don't make the rules. They have you to guys make the The people make the rules. And so, but the children have to be able to. There's also an age restriction, correct? There's also an age restriction on the children. I, but I'm not 100 You do have discretion of whether you're going to sell. I don't, I don't, don't um, import. That's not my jurisdiction in the park. City parks is the market. But you do have your discretion whether you are going to enforce a certain rule. We have discretion on on uh, on misdemeanor offenses. Yes. So if I have someone that keeps committing the same offense after I've warned them several times not to do it and they keep doing it, then we give them a citation. They continue to do that. Then we give people opportunities. If you keep doing the same crime, it, it is against the law. So there, you have to take some responsibility. And that's the thing. A lot of these people, they don't care. They don't care about responsibility. So I can't speak. It's not a perfect world. I can't sit here and say that I do A, B, and C every time. You know? Each individual is going to be different every time. You know what I mean? But truly, we're out there just to... We really are out there to get the, a lot of the homeless off the streets. 
because we're seeing now, maybe 10, 15 years ago, it was more like what you're suggesting. You know, it was a little bit, a little bit different the way we did policing, but now it's a little more uh, community-oriented policing where we're really trying to help these people because we see that if we can get them off the street, it'll reduce a lot of the crimes um, because they're now out there trying to survive. Because it really is, when you're homeless, it's a survival mode. Right. Okay. So, so in relation to that and to the survival mode, when homeless people are making camps in like a vacant lot or something, and you guys come by and give them five minutes to get everything they own, and if they don't get it, you guys throw it in the dumpster, and they first lose all, their all, possessions and their IDs, huh? and they lose like their IDs and their possessions and the stuff that they need to keep them warm during the cold winter. Can I, I'll then explain that to you. How does that help them survive? How does I, that? I'll explain that to you. First of all, a lot of times that's private property. Okay, the owners are coming to us and they don't want the people there. We give them a 24-hour notice. We give them a, it's a little piece of paper that we give them. So hey, you have 24 hours to get off the property because you're trespassing. Um, if they don't do that within the 24 hours, when we do go over there, they have the opportunity to gather their stuff right then and there and take it. If they don't. A lot of the stuff that we take is because it's spoiled, um, has uh, blood, you know, urine, feces, and stuff like that. It's not healthy for them either. And that's where we kind of get into some of the mental um, issues where a lot of them are off their medications. And they don't realize that, you know, because they're attached to it. You know, if you growing up, you had, if you had a binky, you know, regardless if it was wet or whatever, that's your binky. You're gonna, you know, your blanket. You're gonna keep it. Right. That's how some of these people feel, even though it's a hazard to them. So we let them take medication, uh, IDs, and stuff like that. If they don't have their IDs. I can provide them, hey, you can go to Catholic Charities, they can help you get a birth certificate, you need to get an ID. That's what we do. If they don't do all that, then yes, the owner, instead of taking the gel, we move them off the property. We take all the school stuff, the stuff that they don't need, um, we take that. Right, so... Is that, is that, I mean, to kind of confiscate that stuff that you deem to be dangerous or unhealthy. Yeah, because you'd be surprised how many people, have, I mean, well, but they got feces and stuff on their blankets and they're covering themselves up. Now, do you give, um, you know, usually when something gets done, maybe you usually get a, a receipt for the, the property that was taken. Do you guys issue receipts? So they can come back later at some time uh, well, because that, it is a judgment uh, call on the police, you know. And that's only if they go to if they get a, if they go to jail, then they'll get a uh, and we impound their property, and that's when we get their stuff. But this is so this is different than impounding when you can take their stuff, and it's based on an individual police officer's um, deception. Um, you know, the worth of that, that person. But when we're actually doing a cleanup, cleanup, like when we bring out city, the rapid response, me, the rapid response team, and everyone's got all their stuff, they can take anything they can carry, and we give them a notice, anything they can carry. Because there's no reason that someone should have 10 parts full of trash and all that stuff. Oh, you know, if, but, but if they can't, if they can't, it's it another man's trash. But you know, I, well, I know, that. I know. But if, where are you gonna put it if you don't know? I'm not trying to say it sound large, but if you don't have any property to store your stuff, and that's something we're working on, trying to get some facilities where people can kind of store their stuff, so they can go out and look for jobs and look for housing, because it's hard to get a job when you're bringing people up. You know what I'm saying? So who's actually? Appreciate it. Who's working on that? Like, what the park? Like, who are you guys working with? Well, the city council. We're trying to work with the city council. A lot of this stuff, we have to um, go to the city council for the voice of the people. Uh, and it's a, it's, a, it's a slow and it's a hard process to get all this stuff. We have to get all these different regulations. Uh, trust me, we're working on it. And, and through that, I mean, you guys actually. We uh, actually have a homeless, uh, we have a, uh, a homeless quarter uh, meeting that we have uh, the first and third uh, 
Salvation Tuesday of every month. And that's where we have like Catholic Charity, Salvation Army, it's at our substation, the downtown area community. So we bring in the city, we bring in um, all those all those areas and uh, almost four together so we can kind of come up with plans on how to help the homeless. And, I mean, is it open to me? Yeah. I mean, all organizations yeah. are able to help? We're actually looking for, uh, you know, bringing some of the homeless into the meeting, too, so we get their perspective of some of the the hurdles that they're coming, they're, they're, they're going through. Um, so we know it's not perfect, but when you have certain organizations and they get their funding and they have to follow these rules, that's, you know, they have to go by these steps to get their money, and then they have to follow these rules. So we're trying we're constantly trying to find different ways on how to resolve some of the issues. The biggest issue is a wet shelter. We need a wet shelter out here. A lot of these facilities, if you're intoxicated or if they feel that you're on some type of uh, narcotic, they won't let you in the shelters. You know what I'm saying? So we're trying to why we brought up previously. Now, well, we sent them to shelters, all well, you know, shelters won't accept. And I'm sure you're aware, I mean, if you're an alcoholic, you know, it's a disease and a problem yeah. that, you know, I'm not, not drinking. And, we, just can't and we understand that. We so, understand that. And we're, we're working on, that's something we're working on. Um, something else that we're trying to work on is maybe like a, a green area, you know, where the, the homeless can kind of go and kind of keep themselves, you know, while they're waiting, they can leave their stuff and they go out and try to find jobs or whatever they have to try to do. But then again, you run into the problem where, you know, we provide a green area. Okay, who's going to police that? Make sure that all they're, they're doing, no one's doing anything on our bodies. No sexual assaults are happening. No fights are happening. So that's a, a hurdle that we have to kind of, you know, so I, I mean, that's basic police. I mean, that's the general society. You know, yeah, but, has all but, these things but, that are going But the homeless is not the police's problem. It's not, it's not something. It's not illegal to be homeless, right? Right. We're just there when fights happen. We're there, yes, to police that. But it shouldn't be the police department whole you know, goal to you know police an area that is provided for them. Unless, unless, unless issues pop up. Right. But I ideally, guess like sanitation, I because like because otherwise we're like, okay, here you're homeless. This has a place for you, but you know. If you don't act right, I don't think that would be fair to the, the homeless. If, if let's say we got an area, yeah. well, you can come here, but you know, better watch it because the police are just, they're just waiting, you know, for you to mess up. I don't think that would be kind of fair. No, and, and the, the homeless that I deal with, I seem to have that idea when you're in the public parks and stuff that you know that they're targeted. So this is you know where we also have to find out exactly how you guys feel. Is individual not according to uh, policies? You know, we want individual guys like how do you feel, you know, when you deal one on one. When I, I mean, deal on one on one, my whole goal is to try to help them. when I deal with any any person on the street that's that's uh, homeless or it might be their first day on the street, whatever it is, my whole goal and that's and that's why I'm in the position I'm in, I'm in our community or policing, is to help those people that are unfortunate and to give them a roadmap on how to help themselves. Okay? Um, but there is a lot of there is a lot of hurdles. I've helped people get into uh, shelters and, and try to get jobs, but for some little rule at whatever facility they're staying in, they, they broke it or they didn't agree with it, so then they left and then they're kind of back to square one again. Um, and I, th I can say that for all the police officers, we're not out there, oh, here, here's a quick ticket where I can take this person to jail. Um, we're there to keep the peace, and we're there to help people. That's why everyone took this job, is to help people. Um, and I think a lot of the issue is for some of the um, neighborhoods that don't realize they don't have an encounter with the homeless, they don't really treat them like people. You know, they don't look at them as, as people. And they have this perception, um, you're homeless, you're a bad person, you're doing drugs and all this. And there's a lot of good people out there that are homeless that are really good people. But, you know, if they come in their neighborhood, just like if someone comes into your house, you don't know who they are. 
you're going to be a little biased towards you at first until you get to know them. And that's just something you have to change in society, in my personal opinion, um, before that change to take place. And I think the police department is really doing a good effort to, to change that perception, perception of the homeless. Is there, is there ongoing training that you know, you know, with individual officers uh, dealing with them as a subset? Because I, I know in, in um, immigrant communities, you know, there are people, you know, who are familiar with the ways and the people in the immigrant communities so that they're more, um, they understand better the situation. Right. Like, like, so you guys have, with the homeless, understanding homeless issues, and you guys have like an ongoing training. We, we have, we have, within our community oriented policing squad, we have a heart team, which basically deals with the Hispanic community. Evaluation liaison uh, program, and then we have our chronic nuisance. So, like right now, I deal with the health team and also deal with our chronic nuisance. So, what's chronic nuisance? Uh, chronic nuisance, um, you know, your properties, like your businesses, when they have our, like your apartment complex. When there's constant um, calls for service there, uh, police are always going out there, and that, that's your chronic nuisance as far as okay. This is uh, activity as narcotic sales or stuff like that. Any, and there's an NRS that defines chronic nuisance and gets in more detail. But anytime we have repeat calls or repeat problems, it's a chronic nuisance. It's a separate unit. Um, and then we have our health team. That's all they do. We go out, we talk to the homeless, we try to get them into shelter. Talk to all the uh, service providers and try to get them um, on board on hey, how can we get more people in the shelter? Um, it's broken down to veterans, you know, and if you're a vet, you know, we have these services for you. Um, if you're a couple, we kind of have these services that we can help for you. If you're a single male, single woman, we kind of have these services that we can help, help you with. Um, I mean, there's a lot of stuff out there. It's just trying to get the word out there and trying to get, trying to get everyone to come together. Um, so if I go here, I can get you in this program, this program, this program. Right now, it's like, get this program to speed up. You know what I'm saying? It's a work in progress. And we're really constantly, that's what these meetings are for that we do. Trying to get through those speed bumps. Trying to get it better. Is this going to be an ongoing project, these meetings? Yeah, it's been going on for uh, a couple of years. As far as I know. Goodman was not a huge fan of the homeless, and actually, I think he equated them to uh, pigeons as a nuisance. We actually made it illegal to feed hungry people. Uh, made it what? Made it illegal to feed hungry people, literally. Yeah, that was one of them. So, well, that's uh, another the history thing. History of Vegas yeah. with the homeless is an issue now with that kind of attitude 
at least, um, you know, we'll fall in line with the city government. So, in relation to that, if if there was a law like that passed right now, would you enforce it? Well, there's not a law like that, and we wouldn't we wouldn't enforce enforce that. We don't enforce that now. The only thing we enforce when people go out to feed the homeless. Well, I'm asking if there was, would you? Well, that wouldn't be up to me. I mean, if it, if that's what the statute. What is said, up? Ultimately, it's up to you whether you well, enforce if something. Well, if there's a statute like that, hypothetically, if that was a statute, my job is to enforce the law. Okay, so you would just enforce any law as long as it. Well, I use my discretion, just like I use my discretion mm -hmm. now. So would you use your discretion and not arrest somebody for feeding a, a hungry person? Uh -huh. So would I, you I use can't your discretion? That question because. It, Sure you could. No, I can't because I can't say yes. I can't say no. Sure you can. Because it depends on the situation. Okay, so if I was feeding a hungry person, would you arrest me? It depends. On just the simply because it's against the law and for no other reason. Probably the first time, no. I do just like I do like any, any part of my other job. I'm warning, hey, you know it's illegal to feed to the homeless. Mm -hmm. Okay, you came back there after I talked to you. It's like, all right, we already had this discussion. You know, per so, the statute, you're not allowed to do this. Okay, so what would be the safety hazard of me, or the, uh, you know, the danger of me feeding somebody that's hungry? There's a lot of, there's a lot of safety issues. One, if you just do it, uh, you're not um, mandated by the FDA or OSHA to have um, good food. Like you could have spoiled food. That so opposed to that, somebody would dig food out of a dumpster. Food, you have some food. Well, that, that would be good. And that would be that well, would be much better. The Samaritan law that protects uh, businesses and people. I'm just, from I'm, that, I'm, that, just that, saying, I'm, I'm just saying there are some there would be some safety issues with that because you know I might be a business owner. I might have some spoiled meat. I gotta get rid of it. You know what? I'll just go feed it down there because then I can ride it off my tech. I don't know, whatever. You can come up with all kinds of different reasons. Why do people do what they do? You know? I mean, look at the world today. There's a lot of a lot of things going on. Um, ideally, if it was a perfect world, we probably wouldn't have to worry about the homeless, much less someone feeding the homeless. The only issues we have right now when it comes to feeding the homeless is the safety issues when they stop on the side of the road and they park and they get in big gatherings and then it's on a busy street and people drive and someone gets hit. Okay, so a big would you suggest then that, um, because I, I uh, share food with the homeless, um, so would you suggest that we find a safer area? We do, we provide that. We have a giving project every second Saturday of the month. It's growing. Um, we, we started it. Um, last April, I believe, um, what we do, we provide a safe environment for people to come give. We're not against people giving. Well, I mean, I, I like doing it in my own neighborhood, uh -huh. so would you suggest that we just find like an open area, like a park? Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, like... As long as we're not blocking traffic. Yeah, because that's the main thing. It's all about, in, in the eyes of the police, it's all about safety. That's the number one thing, is, is people safe with safety. And when people go out to give, another issue we have is, is the homeless fighting over it. Um, getting in stabbings, uh, getting in fights. You know, I've been doing this for a while, and I, I haven't been called stabbed at all. Well, um, quite, quite the opposite. Um, while we're feeding, I, I see guys actually, if we're running low, will split their food among the other people in their community. Well, then you're, you're pretty fortunate in the group at, that you're serving in because a lot of places we get, we get stabbings, we get knocked down, knocked out of fights. Uh, people are still on their stuff after they, you know, all that stuff. So but we are criminals have, within any community, you know. Exactly. Um, we have to look at it. We have to, it we have to look at it at a bigger level. picture. We can't say this is a good group, this is a bad group. We have to keep the safety there as a bigger picture. Because heaven forbid, you know, you go down to go um, go do a good deed and then it backfires on you and someone ends up stabbing you because you didn't give them an extra pair of pants or something. Stuff like that's happened. I, and going back to... Well, no, no, but I, I mean, I, I don't think that's an indication. I mean, you know, I can be walking down the, the street or going to a bar and I got the truck and stand. So I, I don't think the incident of crime among the homeless is Actually, any Actually, you know how many murders we've had down in this area within the past two years? In which area? The downtown area? Yeah. Amongst the homeless or just amongst... Um, just the homeless. Now, what, what's the number of fair support? Now, how many murders have you had in the general population in that area over the year or shooting the standard? In that area, 
said not, not, not related to the homeless. No. You, you, have, you have no violent crime in that area? No, we've had violent crime, but it's usually been the homeless against the homeless. Not just some uh, pedestrian walking down the street and the homeless will jump. It's like I said, it revolves. Right. It so revolves. there's no domestic violence. I mean, the, the difference is, I mean, attempted murder and murder, I mean, and what I, murder is like, the guy succeeding. I'm just, I'm just telling you that it, 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 there is violence. But there's like, violence across the board. Um, I've actually heard numbers, and the numbers aren't higher than the general population. And if you look at the overall numbers, the then I don't know where you're getting your numbers. It's, we, do, that, we do our statistics, we have our own statistics whenever a call comes out, and we're constantly going down in those areas because of the fights, the stabbing, sexual assaults, um, and then, then the sales of narcotics. A lot of, a lot of them sell narcotics, they get high on spice, they get high on narcotics, and that's when those things come in. And then another issue, so we talked about the wet shelters as being a problem, um, the mental health, we need better mental health facilities, you know, to get some of these people in there. Oh, absolutely. Um, and then kind of going back to the giving project, um, we, we are providing a safe place for people to, to give. They can get, right now, they give clothes, they give food. Um, we even have some. We do it every second Saturday of the month from 10 to 12. No, it's twice a month. No, it's just once a month. Oh, once a month. Right now, it's once a month because we're trying to build. We're trying to get. We got like 10 uh, providers that come out and they donate their time. It's all. It's all free. It's all donations. Um, so we have to have good people that are willing to give their time to do that. We come out there on our own day off. We, we work, my squad works Tuesday through Friday. We come on a Saturday, so we can provide a safe environment. Um, we've got 60 people in housing since we started the program. Um, we've, on average, there's about 180 homeless that come to our event and provide stuff for. So we're out there doing our part, in trying to trying to help. And this is. This is Giving Project is just a kind of like a responsible way of giving with the security of having police there so someone doesn't have to worry about a fight starting up in the line because or they ran out of stuff. How many times have you had this? You know, just too many people came and you just didn't have enough to give and then that one person didn't think anything's bad. Well, for the people that I know that they've never, like I said, the people that I deal with is the community of homeless. Um, we'll take and share. With them, the, 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 uh, you know, but it only takes I, I that one percent to hurt someone. Right, but that's any. I, you know, I work in the casinos, and I've seen guys get angry. But that, and that's that. Oh, but that, I mean, that's but like that's said, just human nature. Um, you know, to indicate that the homeless are more inclined to behave that way. I don't think it's an accurate representation. Um, from my personal experience, um, from other people that have been in the group longer than I have, and have read much longer, also have similar stories. Um, part of the problem, like when you were saying that there's a perception of the homeless uh, being violent, drug addict, um, mentally ill, you know, this is the kind of thing that, that uh, keeps that kind of stereotype in um, You know, so you have to be very careful. We make, um, you know, like the statement sword. Number one, it's a, two, it's a double edged sword because I can, we can go back and forth all day. Sure. And trust me, I'm on your side. I'm, I definitely, I definitely want to. I see a lot of positive things, but the small, regardless if it's a big negative or a small negative, we can't have the negative. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I'm totally, I'm totally there on, on your side as far as like, you know, we have to change perception. You know, sure. there's a lot of good people in our events. Um, out of the, I don't know, I think we've had like 10, 11 of the giving projects. We've only had like three incidents where, you know, someone got in a fight and we actually had, and that's with us there. Right now we had to take someone to jail or we had a legal 2,000 of them because it was mentally there. They didn't know who they were, they didn't know what was going on. So we had to legal them. You know, but still that small percentage. Now that's what the local police there. Now you don't have that police presence and then we have forbid someone get, you know, murdered or anything like like a someone giving. Now the murders that happen are it was the homeless on the homeless. But it's just like any family. You live with someone long enough or you're in a tight small area long enough you can have differences and one day someone just gonna break down and go overboard. So we're definitely, I, I definitely see where you come from, and that's just the thing. You gotta get the word out there. You gotta, um, you know, 
make sure they're aware of all the, the services that are, are provided, make sure the public is aware of how, we, how they can better off uh, help the homeless. Because when people go down to feed the homeless in those areas that don't want to go into shelters, they're really just keeping them homeless. Because they don't have to go do anything. They everything brought to them, so they're not wanting to help themselves because they don't have to. No, I, I can't imagine anybody keeping it behind me. You need, to come, you need, to, come, you need to come ride with me for a week and we'll see. Well, no, just because somebody gives me a sandwich. I mean, it, it, you know. Uh, yeah, that, but that you might just give now. them a sandwich, but two hours later, someone else gives them a sandwich. Two hours after that, someone gives them a blanket. So Four hours after that, someone gives them a, a sleeping bag. Two hours after that, they give them a tent. So you're saying that because these people give them the, the minimum basics for human survival, that that encourages them to stay. Um, so that that's because I can and gave you a sandwich every day and quit your job and come on the because that would be your I'll come, no. let, me, let me do it for a week and see if I can do a sandwich two times a day and sleep in bed with you. Well, you give up the well, right, of anything well, else you have. Right now, that's, I have stuff. But if you don't have stuff, let's say you don't have anything, you're homeless. And I came and gave you a sandwich every day. Actually, I gave you three meals a day because some of these people get five meals a day. I'm thinking four or five meals a day, and a lot of the shelters have free, uh, free uh, service halls for, for feeding, like uh, Catholic Charities at 10 o'clock, you get a free meal. So if I have nothing, and someone keeps coming up every day, give me food, give me clothes, give me a tent, give me all this, there's no motivation. I'm telling you, there's no motivation to get off the streets, and they'll tell you that. It's like, why would I, why would I want to go anywhere? I, have, I don't have to worry about anything. I go, I go solicit, give me a beer, because there are a lot of them are talking about being an alcoholic. They can keep, they can keep uh, their habit. You know, they're, they're so... So come, come, with, with, come with me for a week and I'll show you. I, 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 I do it twice a week. I do it twice a week. I do it every day, 40 hours a week. I'm telling you, a lot of these people are like, why would I want to go work? I get everything. I, I mean, just, it's counterintuitive. Um, just come with me for a week. And, so, and then there's the other issue. I mean, there's the moral issue. Um, you realize that um, for a lot of people, there's the, the religious aspect. Yeah, which that's is, a lot. That's, that deters some of them going to the shelters. Well, no, no, I mean for the people giving. Um, for, um, you know, there's a couple of things where it's, you know, I was hungry and you fed me. I was naked and you clothed me. And it, 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 um, are people who are religious that they should go out and help the homeless and feed the homeless uh, with no expectation um, as keeping them in shelter, you know, keeping them homeless because you can help them. Uh, I don't see it. There's always other, other line, underlying issues. It goes back to, remember I talked about um, we can't help those that don't want to help them. Right. Right. A lot, but the, I mean, what? You, you can't guarantee anything, but the majority of the people that I deal with in the homeless quarter, they're the ones that when we give them food, give them stuff, they're not going to get out of their situation because they're content and they don't have to worry about their responsibility. And they've told me, I want to be homeless. I've had some, you've been homeless 20 years. It's like, I wouldn't change it. I've had numerous people tell me I wouldn't change being homeless. It's like, why? I don't have to work. I don't have no responsibility. You know, I get uh, some of them. Some of them, you kind of get disability money that you get in. I get enough money if, if I do want to go into an apartment. I get to get an apartment, and then I come out here. But that majority so, is increasing. So if they're not doing anything outside of intentionally being homeless, what difference does that make? Yeah. Say what? If they're not doing anything outside of intentionally being homeless, what difference does that make? What are they it doesn't do anything. It, it, like I said, it's not illegal to be homeless. Right. But whenever you're breaking the law and you're destroying other people's property. But we're not talking about that. We're just talking about yeah, people that choose to be homeless. Yeah, they can be homeless. Mm -hmm. But you got to be homeless, you still have to have responsibility within society. You still have to obey the laws. You still have to have respect for other people's property. You can't go in a, a, a crap in, in a corner on someone's, other, on someone's property and have the species and all that build up. That's a hazard issue. Not only that, like but a city, a city issue to provide um, other cities. I mean, you're, you're aware. So if I come, if I come, in, if I come on your property and I use a restroom, that's the city's problem. 
Well, and well, part of it is that uh, at Circle Park, they intent, they locked the bathrooms so that homeless people wouldn't be able to use them. That was when the park was closed, right? No, no. it's right now. No, it's not. And of course, you know. And then, and then they they uh, prosecute people for going to the bathroom in public. Once they've eliminated the public bathrooms. Well, there's other bathrooms besides those park bathrooms. I don't. I didn't know that they were locked up. But yeah, there actually isn't. And there's a, a Burger King close by that you can pay to use the bathroom. There's no public bathrooms anywhere near there. Yeah, it's kind of an odd situation. And most cities. Well, I mean, I, mean, I, I can't answer those. Those. I can't answer that. So that's throughout my pay grade. Right? But that's something where you guys have to go to the city and ask them why they do that. Oh no, no. We, we want to tell you to answer, but I mean, we want to make you aware. So when, when you're going out and you see these behaviors, well, that, you know, you got to understand. Of course, nobody wants uh, somebody to come and shit on their lawn. However, as a society, I mean, we don't provide, uh, you know, public bathrooms or use, uh, restricted use, like, you know what, if you don't give me a dollar for a cup of coffee, I'm not going to use my bathroom. Uh, as a human, as a human, what would you tell somebody who doesn't have the resources and yet still has to use the bathroom? What do you expect them to do? Go to the shelter. No, go to the shelter. And that's where some of them are. Listen, if they don't have the vehicle because they're poor. I'm in an area that doesn't have a shelter. I'm supposed to hold my bowels until I can walk in that shelter. No, but you're not supposed to, you know, use it right in front of a school either. <laughs> you know, well, you know, where kids are, are in the game, like many cities provide uh, shower facilities and, and public events. I mean, a lot of that's so privacy. You don't have to right now. And I'm not sure you And unfortunately, I think a lot of the reasons why they probably don't is because the view that destroy the bathrooms and clog them up and do all that stuff. And that happens. We've got about 15 minutes. We were in Catholic Charities. I was just over there the other day. I just want to make sure we don't run out of time. Someone needs to put a t-shirt in the toilet and put crap on all over the walls. You know, that's, I, that's not, I, but that I, happens more, have more you than you put think. It, have you ever been a cop? I mean, always been a cop. Like growing up, have you ever been to casinos? Uh, no, I've oh. never been to Vegas, so I can not Oh, I, I go to the casinos. <laughs> the same people that did the bathroom the casinos, the tourists and the people that figure together do the same thing. I drove a truck for five walls. years, and I can uh -huh. tell you, I drove a truck for five years, I can tell you public bathrooms are hideous. Yeah, they are. Yeah. It's not yeah. homeless people, yeah, it's, it's everybody. People just have yeah. and, and the solution shouldn't be to lock the bathroom so that they do that you well, know, that, on the sidewalk well, next to it. It's not my choice to do that. No. It's, it's, the, uh, yeah. it's the people's choice or the, the city's decision to do that. It's not my choice. The parks are the city owned. Metro doesn't... Right. Metro doesn't um, uh, that's not their jurisdiction. That's not our jurisdiction. That's the city marshals. So all those issues like that, you know. Oh no, yeah, that's true too. Um, but like, I wouldn't know where they're locked. The only reason I'm just saying, the only reason I can think that is maybe they're destroying the bathroom. Maybe they're maybe they got to fix them. I don't know. Uh, uh, specifically about mental health, there is the uh, crisis intervention team. Yeah, we got. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you already talked about that. Uh, yeah. We did. Um, cool. So, did you have any other questions? I mean, because even on the the homeless and the crisis, but there were some other issues. I mean, well, yeah, we got other issues. Are you able to, to talk on other um, besides the homeless and the? I mean, yeah, I don't have a problem talking. Okay. Um, I encourage you guys to come to some of the meetings, though. I, I got like 12 minutes left. So yeah, I got it. Cool. So I want to when it comes to, uh, you know, there were a lot of officers, like thousands recently, that weren't enforcing a lot of uh, uh, nonviolent or victimless crimes in, you know, in New York, in NYPD. Uh, do you, I don't know, what would you say, in your opinion, was that, uh, like, was that wrong? Was there a mistake? I mean, there wasn't, there was no increase in crime uh, during that period when they weren't enforcing, we're saying like 88 to 94 percent of crimes and not writing many traffic tickets. I had like, no idea. You, Where was you don't that? know about NYPD. So I, I'm not oh, familiar yeah. with it. Oh, as the protest gets the mayor. All the officers in New York are in the back. Um, the mayor. Oh, you don't know about that. 
the police officers that were shot. And that the uh, police shooting actually called for a police stoppage and slowdown. Oh, really? Uh, and not to do their job. They said not to do their job. Uh, and the, you know, they thought they were scared. This is the first time they were scared. Um, and the actual consequence is that the traffic slowed down tremendously. Um, and if there wasn't a police uprising, they were actually going to and the city were actively pursuing these minor uh, non-violent uh, quality of life crimes. You know, right into the city where you walk in, where there's like kind of really no victim. I mean, but that's, that's what it works. I mean, if you look at the metro as a whole, I think we do a pretty good job of the things that we do. And the only reason we enforce a lot of the uh, jaywalking and stuff like that is because our fatality rate for uh, pedestrians and vehicles was skyrocketing. Um, I, get a, um, I don't know the numbers, I could ask the traffic officer, but it was way too many. And, you know, that's something that the, the sheriff pushed at that time, is to, you know, to, to kind of enforce those laws and war. Um, that's one reason why we got away with handling a lot of the accidents, the minor accidents, so we can enforce some of the traffic, the traffic safety, um, like the crosswalks, making sure that the pedestrians are safe, Going to go there, you know, slowing the vehicles down. That's that's where a lot of the fatalities happen is because people get run over in a crosswalk. They're supposed to be safe. Hey, um, that was uh, Chef Flex, right? You talked about now. Well, I've got a question in relation to that about the saturation teams, which they've actually stated that they're what they do is they basically depend descend upon a neighborhood, you know, seek out anybody they can find for any minor excuse to stop and search them and to ID them and um, basically just harass everybody in the neighborhood because they've determined that this neighborhood is a high-risk neighborhood. So, do you, And they've also specifically stated we would not do that in Summerlin. That was a quote in the newspaper by a Metro spokesperson. So do you think it's right to harass everybody within a neighborhood because a certain small percentage of people in that neighborhood might commit crimes? Well, I don't, I wouldn't use harass, first of all, but we do take crime statistics. If there is a spike in, in violent crimes, that's usually what, it, what we base it on. Violent crimes meaning uh, street robberies, uh, sexual assaults, um, like uh, assault battery with weapons or just, you know, vice versa. That when we get a spike like that, we do, that's where the saturation teams, they go in and they try to, uh, you know, Make sure that um, if that is going on, they're going to stop talking to people and find out who's causing problems. Because a lot of times when that happens, with a spike, um, it's, a lot of times it falls back to like narcotics uh, or gang involvement, stuff like that that increases um, the violence in that area. So when police go in there, that's what they're, they're focusing on, is trying to focus on the criminal element, rather it be a, uh, a gang. Um, we got intel that a gang moved in the area and they're trying to take over the turf, or may it be uh, narcotics, uh, you know, intel that hey, there's uh, drugs and drug dealers in the area and, that, and they're protecting their, their turf. That is what we try to do. It's not like hey, we're going to win there. And, you know, stop everyone or jaywalking. But you know, well, they, they've actually said that that's the policy. Huh? They've actually said that's the policy. There's no policy. There is a policy. There's a stated policy. There's no policy saying that we're going to stop everyone. No, that, that was a Metro spokesman. They actually said that. Well, that that's know, what they do. I don't know what Metro person that was, but there's no policy saying, hey, uh, you guys from here to here, you're going to stop everyone for everything. That's not how we. That's not how we operate. We operate. We try to find a criminal element. Now, does jaywalking give me a probable cause to stop someone, to talk to them, to see if they belong in the neighborhood, to see if they are part of the problem? Yes. It's a, it's a how do you determine that? Yeah, right. how, do, how do you determine who belongs in a neighborhood? Yeah, that's kind By of talking to them. Okay, so what determines that they don't belong in a neighborhood? And they tell you, hey, I don't live here. Yeah, but why would so you you're not allowed in 
neighborhoods you don't live in? That's a natural extension of what you're saying. You're saying no, somebody to told you they don't live in a neighborhood, so listen they don't belong there. Listen to me real quick. If someone jaywalks, I'm in the area because they're increasing crime. Hey, hey, we declared that this there's been an increase in crime here. All right, so um, we're going to patrol this area more. I'm driving around. I see someone uh, committing crime. I'm going to stop talking. Am I going to write a ticket, take him to jail right away? No. My goal is to find out what the problem is. What, what's the issue? Is this person part of the problem? So I stop him. I have a right to stop him because he broke the law. Okay, now, there, that's when I, I can interrogate him. Hey, what are you doing here? Right. Oh, I'm driving through. That's how we do things. Right, so you don't have a stop and frisk policy? No, no, no. No. That, that's like old school. Like, you know, way back in the day when they first started policing, policing has changed a lot. It really has. You know what I'm saying? We really are out there. Um, there's a lot. There's a lot of laws. There's a lot of rights that people have. We can't just go and stop anyone. Okay? People have the right to walk down the sidewalk, regardless of who they are. Okay? It's my job to figure out if they're about to commit a crime, or committed a crime, you know, in that area. So if I can stop someone by breaking a small crime to stop and talk to them and, and question them and make them feel uncomfortable. As far as like, okay, so you don't live here. Well, then what are you doing? Well, um, I'm visiting a friend. What's your friend's name? Uh, you know, stuff like that. We're not, we don't, we're not trying to get him up to get, you know, just Joe Citizen walking through a neighborhood. Does that make sense? Or, oh, I hear what you're saying. Um, I mean, because I, mean, I know you've seen right. more of the, um, uh, like well, I, I seem like a person that has lived in minority neighborhoods and seen yeah. minority stop for no reason whatsoever. So, but that's yeah. not true. That is true. Stop, you don't yeah. just stop everyone. Maybe back in the day when you were growing up. Maybe a year ago. Is it, no, no, no. <laughs> no, it's a policy. Well, what's your de definition of minority then? I, I mean, there's a lot of definitions of minorities. What's your definition? People of color is, is a huge definition of it. Well, what's yours though? I just said it. You know, people of color are a minority. There's different. There's different uh, ethnicities within that that group. But I've lived in Latino neighborhoods. I've lived in black neighborhoods. I've lived in poor white neighborhoods. So you're saying we live in those neighborhoods? You never got stopped? Well, I am saying that I have been stopped in poor white neighborhoods. Yes. Okay, no, I'm talking about the, na the Hispanic neighborhoods. When you're going through there, you never got. Generally, stopped. no. What were you doing in those? Like, I lived there. Okay. So. And a lot of the people so, that I saw. I mean, so if it's majority Hispanic, so if you stop someone, the odds are they're going to be Hispanic, right? No. So how can you say? Well, that's not, I'm not. I'm basing it on you stopped a Hispanic person. I'm basing it on I've seen cops drive up when a person is just simply walking down the street, stop and question somebody. Question them or just talk to them? Because I'll, I'll stop and talk to anyone. They well, the if they know their rights, then they know that they can t they can ask whether they're being detained. But a lot of people don't actually oh, know their good, rights. Good. You know what? This is a good time. All right. Now you're familiar. Now are you familiar with these fires that are given out? Uh, oh, I hand them out. Oh, you do. I've never I, seen it. Is there anything on there that you would find objectionable? I'm What do you mean? Is any of the policies that we find when we're dealing with informing uh, citizens of their rights when, when dealing with the police? Uh, I mean, this is actually brought up on uh, that Kelly. Oh, uh, do you need to go? Um, yeah, if you want to use that, it might be easier. Yeah, you can use that about three minutes. Now, where did they, they was it So, show? yeah, I mean, is there anything on there that you would disagree with or, or have an issue with? I don't have an opinion. I can't give my opinion. Well, these are, these are policies for citizens dealing with the cops. I mean, you know, would you say that any of these are, you know, are detrimental to... Well, everyone has their rights. Right. So, I mean, everyone has their, their, their rights. It's their, it's their 
their duty to, you know, well, so you're you're familiar with laws, right? Obviously. So, I mean, do you see anything inconsistent with the laws on there? No, you're right. I mean, do you see any errors in what's written there? I just added maybe give me a second to read it and then. Yeah, it's and small print. Yeah. Oh, we're, we're not working with the, quite the budget that Metro has. <laughs> so, what organization do you guys with? Nevada Cop Block. Are you familiar with us? I, I've heard of you. Now, have you heard of us um, in a positive way or a negative way? Um, I would say kind of neutral. Some, I mean, some of the things that you guys bring out, I think you're just trying to um, uh, promote people's rights or make them understand their, their rights, and we have no problem with that. Everyone has. Everyone needs to know their rights. Um, so, it make everybody's job a lot easier, I would imagine. Um, we're, we're dealing with we're dealing with a small percentage of people that, first of all, they don't care about society because they don't care about the other person. Uh, that's why you know they commit you know, horrendous crimes against other people. For one reason or another. But I, I mean, that's. I mean, what? this comes way after. I mean, um, um, when everybody's. I mean, you're presumed innocent, totally guilty. So even when you make an arrest, you know, it, it still has to go before somebody can make a determination. Um, so I mean, that that will be determined by juries and, and judges. But in the initial stop. And, and